But we were fortunate enough to um, have the zoo sponsor some professional development for us as we were planning our penguin breeding protocol and our incubation protocol. I got to go to the Baltimore Zoo in Maryland who has the largest breeding colony of African penguins of any AZA accredited facility. Um, was really cool. I got to bring back a lot of information and Megan got to go to a really cool egg incubation workshop in Kansas City, Missouri. So every morning, the first thing you would do if you were in the penguin section is go to the nursery in our quarantine building and check on the egg. And Megan had a pretty good idea of when the baby would start internally pipping, which is when it kind of breaks the membrane into the air cell with its beak and it begins the process of actually emerging from the egg. And one morning I went in to check on it uh, we turned the incubator off and opened the door, and um, I could actually hear it pipping. It was so cute. You could hear her calling inside. I want to tear up. You could hear her calling inside the egg, and the first thing I did was call Megan. <laughs> like, I can hear it, Megan. It's moving. It's 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 talking to me. Um, I think it's ready to go to the parents. Um, so what we actually do when we do hear that internal pip take it back to the parents who've been sitting on fake eggs this whole time they have no idea um, and we just kind of lift them up and do a little switcheroo and uh, let the parents do their thing I uh, called Megan let her know that it had internally pipped um, I think we waited a little bit for an external pip which was like a little crack or hole um, in the egg which was also a super awesome discovery we took lots of videos and we let the whole zoo staff know because everyone was really excited um, almost 72 hours mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. that little thing worked really hard for three days to get out of that egg um, so it was a really stressful time for us we uh, that's that's all that was on our minds um, Megan even came in after hours a couple times to check on it to make sure it was doing okay mm -hmm. and uh, Robin the dad did most of the egg sitting he did an excellent job he uh, kept it warm the whole time um, yeah, so whenever we lifted Robin up just a little bit to look at what was going on, we could see the progress and uh, make sure that she was doing okay. On International Penguin Day, January 20th at 12 p.m., we went and we had been periodically checking on the egg and making sure that it had enough moisture so that way uh, the baby could do her rotation process inside the egg so that way she can pull up the last of all of those nutrients that she needs to pull into her body. Uh, so that way her belly button can seal itself up. Um, so at 12 p.m. we went and we moistened the egg and then it actually started that rotation process at that time. So that was actually really, really neat for us to see because once that rotation process happens, it's going to be within the next hour that the chick is hatched out completely. So. Once we saw the rotation, we kind of just put the egg back and let the parents do their thing and we kind of waited and then around 4 p.m. Uh, we went back in to check on things and we found a chick. So we found her and she was kind of all wet and her head was yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mom but, and dad were uh -huh. really protective. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But she was, she was doing great. Um, and then the next day, so basically what happens is the chick has a yolk sac that it can eat basically for the next 24 hours after it hatches. So the parents don't need to feed it. Um, so the next day after that though, we, it was in the morning and we went to go check on the baby and we went to go feed the parents. And I fed the, the dad, I fed him you know, his fish. And then about a half hour later, I actually saw him feed the baby for what I believe was the first time that the baby had eaten. So that was also a really good sign because that means that we wouldn't have to take the baby away from the parents and feed it ourselves, which would be a very stressful thing because we would have to feed her like every like six hours or something. Yeah. So so uh, it was really great that, that the parents were taking such good care of her. And then from there we... For being first time parents, they did a really good Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were they did a really good job and we monitored her throughout the entire time every other day Yeah, we weighed her mm -hmm. and she gained weight really really fast um, 
over the first two months, I think they get to be about the size of an adult. So she grew really fast. But when we first weighed her the day after she hatched, she could fit in my hands just like this. She, we weighed her in a little cup. And uh, by the next month, we were picking her up and setting her in a bucket so that she could actually mm -hmm. be weighed. Mm -hmm. um, and now she's to the point where we don't have to weigh her every day. We do it every other day. And um, yeah, she's, she's a heavy girl. Yeah, she's very muscular now. Yeah. The hatch of the African penguin chick is really important, not only for the zoo as a first, but for the species in general. African penguins are endangered in the wild with only about 60,000 individuals left on the continent of Africa. To put that into perspective, there are about the same number of individuals living in the city of Saginaw. African penguins have experienced a 90% population decline since the early 1900s. One of the threats they face in the wild is loss of suitable nesting ground. The guano was harvested historically to help as fertilizer before modern fertilizers were invented. Now that that practice is illegal, we need to replenish suitable nesting grounds. Safe, or saving animals from extinction, is a collaborative conservation program that AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, put together for all of its members zoos to be able to participate. The African penguin, the first species selected for this new program, there are 10 specific projects that we are focusing on to help increase the number of penguins in the wild. One of them is the artificial nest program. When you come visit the Saginaw Children's Zoo, you can see two sample nests of what we placed into the wild for African penguins to be able to hatch their eggs and rear a family in. SSP scientists look at the pedigree of all the African penguins in AZA member zoos and aquariums to make the best matches. We want to have penguins breeding who will make the strongest, healthiest chicks. These help us continue the population into the future. Simultaneously, while we ensure our zoo and aquarium population is vibrant and thriving, we work to address the threats African penguins are facing in the wild. And you can help us on our journey. When you make purchases in the gift shop, a portion of the proceeds benefit the Field Conservation Fund, including the work we do with African penguins. Thank you for helping us save African penguins.